we had a big demonstration down there. We thought it was big. And uh, we, we, we had a big demonstration at Lev's restaurant. And we had about 60 kids, 60 young people down there. And then the Klan came down with about, I guess about 200. And Cordell Reagan and myself, we said, man, we gotta do something because he had some young people down there that got a little shaky, they got a little afraid. So when you, people get a little afraid, you gotta do something. You gotta do something to dispel that fear. So what we did, we ran down on Auburn Avenue, that's where all the joints were, where the black people were. And we snatched the plugs out of the jukebox, out of the wall, jumped up on the bars, and told them we had women and children down there, and we needed somebody to, to help out. You guys ain't done nothing, so come on, we got to go. I mean, you had to be like that. We went all the way down the street, and when we came back, women was in those bars telling guys, get out and help them kids and them women. You know, the women were just pushing guys out there to help. It was really interesting. When we came back, we had, I guess, about 100 or so these guys who were, had been drinking. And we said, now how are we gonna handle these guys? So there's out there, and we found out a lot of them were World War II veterans. And they were out there on that street, and they marched down that street. We had them marching. And we got them down there, we had to line them up on both sides. It was a wide street, it was very wide sidewalk. And we lined them up on each side of the sidewalk. We had them singing freedom songs. We started them to sing, started them to sing. And the Klan got nerve enough to walk between these guys and put an elbow on one. And we saw him flinch because they weren't nonviolent. I mean, we was trying to, <laughs> they hadn't made no commitment to nonviolence. But anyway, finally, it got too much for them. And they closed rank on the Klan. They closed rank. And I said, oh God, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? And the Klan was trying to get out of there because there was a rock wall there and they was trying to climb up that rock wall to get away from this crowd. And we had the Grand Dragon that he had on a, this red robe and his hood, man, he was sharp. And one of the things that I wanted was his clothes, you know. <laughs> But it was so many, it was, you had a lot of newspaper reporters there, so they came in with the cameras and I couldn't take the man's clothes. But anyway, that was, uh, <laughs> that was one of the things we, you know, you had to do, you had to do things to dispel fear. And other kinds of demonstration when the Klan would come out, you had to do something. And another time I got a sheet from Rich's, I think it was Rich's, his apartment store, and I said, somebody went down, I said, go get a sheet. And they got a sheet, and I put a sheet around me, and I got in the Klan line. And uh, they uh, started calling me names and told me I better get out of that line, and God kicked me on my leg. And you had to do things. I turned around and cursed him out with everything that I could even dream of. And what happened was, it's the first time he'd ever had any black person that talked to him like that before. So he's, he, he, he's, he's, he's lost it. He don't know what to do. Then he said, I bet you won't follow us down in that alley. It was going around in that alley. I said, oh my God, what did I do? And I couldn't do anything because I wasn't going to get out. But when we got in the alley, it was a bunch of cops back there. That's the first time I'd run. Man, I was glad to see all those policemen. They had hid out in that alley. So when we came back around, the kids would start to sing in the old KKK, they ain't what they used to be, ain't what they used to be. But the thing was, those are the kind of thing you had to really do to dispel a lot of fear of young people and people on those lines. And you had to do the same thing in jails. When you got in jail uh, with a lot of young people, you really had to become real leaders in there to keep that fear down. And we would do a lot of singing, we'd do workshops in jail and uh, so forth. So uh, those are some of the experiences I had in Atlanta. You know? So it was interesting. It was interesting. And another thing, too, Ging Odinga came there one time from Africa, and it was playing up how liberal Atlanta was. So we decided to show him really how liberal it was. So we had to sit in a restaurant where he had to come by, the place he was staying. 
and that uh, and they was throwing us in jail. They was trying to get us out of the restaurant, and he was watching that whole thing. And he just started get, giving the black power side a hoora, a hoora. And that, uh, anyway, we did a song about that, you know. And also, you guys um, came up with the black power song, is that correct? Yeah, we did. You know, we used it. I, first people I know who used the power sign was, was SNCC people, you know, especially Stokely and some of the black power, the heavy black power people, my brother like Chico and, and uh, Stokely and that whole black power movement came in, you know, they came up with the power sign, yeah. 